Welcome to the presentation of our paper, Populating the People Optimizer of a Smart Contract Compiler. This is joint work with Julian Nagele. So what is our motivation? Assume we have a smart contract language compiling to a bytecode based on a stack model, such as Ethereum bytecode, for example. So we could have a small program like here on the left. First, pushing zero onto the stack, then subtracting the two values on the top of the stack, then pushing zero, uh, 3 onto the stack, then adding the top two values and finally computing the hash of the top of the stack. When we start with a word w on the stack, and when executing these programs, we get the hash of 3 plus parentheses 0 minus w parentheses closed on the top of the stack. But with a bit of math we realize that this that this is the same as computing the hash of 3 minus w. And this already hints that there should be a different, simpler program leading to the same stack. And indeed, if we push 3 onto the stack and then subtract and then compute the hash, we arrive at the same stack. And key here is, the second program is cheaper to execute. Every executed instruction costs gas, and by removing push 0 and add, we save 6 gas. So the second program is an optimization of the first program. Now let's take these two programs. They are observationally equivalent, because for any input word w, they produce the same result. But, as we said, one is an optimization of the other. So we want to reuse this insight from this optimization. And we can see that the optimization does not really depend on the value 3 as the argument of push. Moreover, the computation of the, has, of the hash is not really significant either. So we want to extract the core of optimizations to generate people optimization rules, small rewrite rules which we can use in a compiler to optimize small snippets of bytecode, that is, peepholes. And if we come back to our running example, we would like to get the following rewrite rule, push 0 sub push x add optimizes to push, push x sub. And when I say we want to get the rule, I mean we want to get the rule automatically. And that is the goal of our paper. So how do we achieve that? Our pipeline looks like the following. We start from a code base from which we extract small programs. Then, step 1, we try to find an optimization of this program. In step 2, we generate rules from a found optimization. Then, in step 3, we feed the found rules back to A, optimize the rules themselves, and B, optimize the original code base. And then, we repeat the process. We implemented, we implemented this in a case study for Ethereum bytecode and found that for the thousand most cold contracts from the Ethereum blockchain, with our pipeline we could have saved around $56,000 of execution costs. Here we assume an average gas cost uh, of an average cost of gas and ether, and that 10% of every contract is executed when cold. And we could also save space. About 4.5% of the instructions are superfluous. So next we will zoom in on the steps in the pipeline. First we find optimizations. That is, for a given program row, we want to find an observationally equivalent program tau that has a smaller cost. And here the gas model gives us a very clear cost model. To find optimizations we have two ingredients. First, a constraint solver. Here we used Z3. That is, we asked Z3 to find us a cheaper, observationally equivalent program. Therefore, we encode our program's row and the search to SMT. This encoding of the search is based on unbounded super-optimization, our second ingredient. So how does this encoding look like on a high level? Like this. Let me walk you through this. The main parts. So we have states of the stack while executing programs row and tau. We write sigma for the states executing row and sigma prime for states of the target program tau. 
we use subscripts for states for the step of in the execution. So sigma 0 indicates the initial state, and sigma rho plus 1 is the final state after executing rho. We use a single error for the constraint of a single step in the program executing an instruction yoda. And for executing the whole program row, we write a double error. Finally, we use the equivalence sign to denote equivalence on states. With that in mind, we ask the solver for two things. An integer n, the length of the program we are looking for, and a function tau, which tells us which instructions to use. Together, these represent our target program tau. Finally, we quantify over all possible inputs. Then, the first line of the constraint initializes sigma 0 with input x and executes rho, ending in some state sigma rho plus 1. In the second line, we take the states for our input program tau and ask that we start and end in the same state as rho. The third line encodes the actual search. It says, if we choose instruction yoda for step j, then the effect on state sigma prime j is that of yoda, and we have to choose one of the available instructions at every position of tau. These three lines look for a program tau that is observationally equivalent to rho. So the final line simply adds that tau is also cheaper than rho, so an optimization. If this constraint is satisfiable, then we ask the solver for a model. From the model, it's then easy to reconstruct tau. If the constraint is answered, then rho was already optimal. We implemented this approach in our tool EBSO, the EVM bytecode super optimizer. For our case study, we took the 250 most called smart contracts from the Ethereum blockchain. We then split them into about 100,000 smaller programs, namely basic blocks. That is, we split along control flow changes, because we cannot take loops into account. We write basic plus blocks here because we can also split along instructions we haven't encoded or haven't yet encoded. For example, we haven't encoded the semantics of Ethereum's logging instructions, so we can split there. This also makes a very iterative development possible. Because people optimization rules are typically small, we further split them into blocks of at most six instructions. We also filter out some duplicates which are only different in the arguments of push. So finally, we end up with about 54,000 blocks. We run EBSO on each of these blocks on a cluster with a 15 minute timeout and 2 GB of memory. From that we get about 1580 optimizations. Keep these 1580 optimizations in mind. Next we want to generate rules from these optimizations. So we go back to our motivating example. We observed already that the rules we want to generate do not that the rule we want to generate does not depend on two things, the argument 3 of push and the computation of the hash. So basically, to generate rules we want to do two things. One, we want to generalize arguments of push as much as possible. We cannot, for example, generalize the argument of the first push, push 0, because our rule depends on 0. Two, we want to strip unnecessary contexts such as SHA3 from our optimization. And how do we do this? We generalize, we ge well, generalize roughly translate to finding a substitution. That is, we want to find a substitution from the arguments of push to our original optimization. Here it may help to observe that every optimization can already be used as a rule, but clearly we want the rules to be as usable as possible, so we generalize the arguments of push as much as possible. On the other hand, strip roughly translates to finding a contents. context. Again, we could keep the original optimization as a rule, but we would like to strip away as much context as possible. And this basically translates to a simple approach using an exhaustive search. Try all substitutions and contexts and check whether the resulting left and right hand sides are still observationally equivalent. However, we can prune the search space we can however we can prune the search space a bit.
We do this by defining orders and substitutions in contexts. Now we just need a way to check observational equivalence. And if you have a hammer, by using the same ingredients as for super optimizations, it's easy to encode this check in SMT. To check whether two programs are observationally equivalent, we ask the SMT server to find an input dis that distinguishes them. So we look for input where the programs end up in different states. The first line of our encoding again in initializes two states for our two programs row and tau. The second line executes the two programs on the states. But this time in the third line we demand that they end up in different states. So if this constraint is unsat, so no input gets us into different final states, they are equivalent, which means we have found a substitutional context that gives us a correct rule. If it is sat, they are not equivalent and we discard this candidate and move on to the next. Again, we implemented this in our tool SORC, the super optimization based rule generator. So we implemented generalize and strip. Then we took the 1580 optimizations from before and ran them on the same cluster. About half of the rules were duplicates. That is, they were the same rule generated from different optimizations. We removed the duplicates and ended up with 758 rules. Finally, we went on to kind of the last step, the feedback. We took the 758 rules and gave them to our tool Populator, the populator of people optimization rules. Populator can take a set of rules, a CSV actually. Then Populator can use the rules to reduce the rules themselves. That is, Populator applies the rules to the right hand side of the rules exhaustively. We did this for our, our 758 rules and reduced four rules. But then came the more interesting part. What happens when we apply the rules to the original code base? We did this and actually this changed about 17,000 of these original blocks. And with these new blocks we started the whole pipeline again. That is, we first found optimizations with Abso and generated rules with Sorg. This resulted in us finding 435 new roles, rules. Again, about half of them were duplicates of the 758 rules found in the first iteration. By combining them, we arrive at our final set of proposed people optimization rules of nearly a thousand rules. So what do these rules look like? Well, you can have a look at them in our GitHub repo of Populator. There you can investigate all the rules we found. Here, we picked four rules to have a closer look at. First, we look at the rules which were most applicable on the thousand most cold contracts. That is, we now extend from where we sourced our rules from, the 250 most cold contracts, to the most thousand most cold contracts. We observe that the rules translate well. So these three rules here were each applied at least 7000 times. For the first rule, we found that we can replace three calls to is zero with a single call to is zero. This is a nice example on how the semantics of the instructions matter and interact, to give a short intuition. After the first call to is zero, we know that only zero or one can be on the stack, indicating either true or false. The second and third call of is zero only flip the number twice, so we know we can remove these two is zeros. The second rule removes a superfluous swap, swap. That is, instead of pushing first x and y, we reverse the push operations. A fairly straightforward rule. The third rule is maybe a bit unexpected. It is cheaper to execute call value twice than to execute dupe. We believe that this optimization is easily miss when, missed when we assume that stack operations are very cheap. Let's now maybe investigate a bit more of a complex rule. This rule saves 15 gas and 5 instructions. 
In the left hand side of this rule, we first push 0 onto the stack. Then we fetch two numbers by duplicating them from position 6 and 5 in the stack. Then we subtract them. Then we call less than. Now it's crucial that we called less than and not signed less than. Because now 0 is always the smallest element. Nothing will be less than 0. So whatever is the result of the subtraction, it is certainly not less than 0. Hence, it will always put 0, that is false, on the stack. Then the final call is 0 flips that to true, and so puts 1 onto the stack. And this is exactly the right-hand side of the rule. This rule also shows a limitation of our rule format. We cannot deal with higher order patterns. So we cannot take into account that this rule would work for anything that just puts one word on the stack between push and less than. And most of you familiar with a bit of term rewriting by now may have thought multiple times this looks a lot like rewrite rules. And indeed, they are. So for the rest of our talk we will explore these, this and some frequently asked questions. Can our rules just be applied exhaustively? Yes, the termination prover Wanda shows termination automatically. And this was kind of expected. The gas cost of the instructions give an intuition already, because we always have a decrease built in, and thus a termination argument. But does the result depend on which rules are applied? And the answer here is also yes, as the confluence prover CSI shows. The rules are not confluent, so we could arrive at different results depending on, on the strategy used to apply them. And here again, this is not surprising, because there are many examples where two different programs with same costs yield the same res result. Like for example, push1, one, push1 one versus push1, one, dup1. One. So a natural follow-up question would be whether such conflicts between rules can be resolved to get the confluent system. And that's exactly what Knut Bendix completion does. So applying that might make for interesting future work. Speaking of future work, how do we now get these rules into a compiler? For instance, the Solidity compiler. A standard approach is to have a domain-specific language for people optimization rules, like for example GCC. If that's available, then simply generating the rules in this format is easy. If not, then we could also generate code from Populator directly. But of course that will then depend on the rewriting API of the compiler. Finally, while we implemented our case study for Ethereum bytecode, we believe the approach is also applicable to other languages. So to do so, we basically need two things an encoding of the operational semantics in SMT and an existing code base to cook, kick off the search for optimizations. Before we summarize a quick ad advertisement, if you are interested in optimizing smart contracts using SMT, there's more at CAF. On Wednesday, Pablo will present our paper on synthesis, synthesis of super-optimized smart contracts using Max SMT. So to recap, we want to automatically generate people optimization rules for smart contract comp compiler. To this end, we first find optimizations from an existing code base using super optimization. Then we generate optimization rules by generalizing irrelevant arguments and stripping away irrelevant context. And finally, we feed the rules back and apply them to themselves and to the code base. We believe our approach is especially well suited for smart contract languages for two reasons. First, developing people optimization rules by hand is tedious and error prone. So for young, rapidly evolving languages, tool support is very useful. Moreover, the cost model of GAS is a clear optimization target. All of the code and the generated rules are available on GitHub and we encourage you to check it out. And if you have any questions, we look forward to them during the workshop and, of course, you can always email us. And with that it remains me to thank you for your attention.